From the Media One Newsroom, I'm Roger McCoy with breaking news. A modern-day rendition of Lord of the Flies almost killed one Dorset Township man earlier this week. 18-year-old Cody Trent of Dorset and four of his juvenile followers are accused of brutally abusing 47-year-old Tim Chamberlain at his Railroad Street home on Sunday afternoon, according to the Ashtabula County Sheriff's Department. Trent and four other teens accused Chamberlain of stealing one of their iPods, and when Chamberlain denied the accusations, the teens went berserk inside his home. While two teenage girls watched on, the three boys started tearing down drywall, smashing electronics, ripping out the toilet, pulling out insulation from the attic, smashing all the windows out of the residence, and finally beating Chamberlain with a saucepan before robbing him so they could purchase chicken wings. But the teen's guilt led them to nursing Chamberlain back to health by giving him urine mixed with cocoa to drink out of a hard hat before starting a fire on his living room floor to keep him warm. The teens then abandoned Chamberlain, who was found two days later suffering from hypothermia inside his home by Pastor Ed Pickard. Ashtabula County Sheriff William Johnson says the teens are facing some serious charges. Chamberlain is recovering from the violent assault at ACMC, where he's listed in stable condition. Home Depot and the Dorset Volunteer Fire Department donated supplies and time to board up Chamberlain's home while he recovers. From the Media One Newsroom, I'm Roger McCoy. Well, from what I understand, it um, there were some people that went over, uh, supposedly it, it appeared like they were going to party or something, and they were accusing, accusatory about something that uh, the gentleman might have had. We, we really didn't find out right away. Um, we got a tip from uh, a minister to check on the welfare. When we did check on the welfare, um, you know, we, we observed that it was uh, very serious. Uh, the person was suffering from hypothermia. Um, and, uh, you know, the house was basically destroyed. Our, our first goal there was to make sure that the gentleman got the uh, necessary help, medical help that he needed, so he got, we, we got him in the cruiser to warm him up, and, and then we got the ambulance to take him to the hospital. And then later on, uh, through the investigation, we learned that uh, there were suspects uh, uh, that, uh, you know, violated this guy. Um, and uh, of course, the report is uh, is pretty thorough right now. Uh, there were uh, there were some juveniles, but there was also adults involved. And and, and right now, they're looking at some very serious crimes. Very what, serious crimes. What kind of charges do you think is going to stem out of this? Because from what I read in the report, it said that uh, they punched him in the face several times, and one of the juveniles hit him over the head with uh, a frying pan. Right. Well, and they uh, and through the course of the report, and like I said, this will go to trial. But uh, there are several charges that could come out of this. I mean, we're taking a look at. Uh, um, and we'll go over with the prosecutor, but you're looking at aggravated burglary. Um, you're looking at uh, uh, criminal damaging, vandalism, uh, felonious assault. I mean, uh, all felony charges uh, that are related in this particular case. So uh, when we got the, the investigation pretty well uh, through, um, you know, all them charges will go up. Prosecutor will take a look at it. But uh, we do have some people in, in jail uh, as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if they bonded out yet, but uh, this will go to trial, and they're very serious charges. Uh, it's something that's very serious. Could these uh, individuals face up to 10, 15 years in prison you know, or something I, like that? I this? don't really know. I, yeah, we're, we're looking at uh, high-degree felonies, so we're looking at uh, major time uh, in jail when it's done. But uh, the prosecutor will go through that, and then, of course, we certainly got to get the conviction, but we believe that uh, we have the people responsible for this crime. Now, this uh, suspect who was accused of doing these crimes, was there a long track record for this individual? I, I'm not going to really get into, into that, uh, uh, to be honest with you right now, Roger, and, you know, until this gets in, a, uh, in the court. What I will tell you is the crimes that were committed, we believe we have the people that were responsible, and I can tell you they're very serious crimes. They're not something that... Uh, is a misdemeanor. They're big time felonies and, and, and these kids are going to be looking at some uh, uh, some serious uh, uh, consequences, I'm sure. Now do you think if you hadn't found uh, the victim within another day, do you think he would have perished? Because apparently his body temperature was at 96 degrees according to the report. There's a good possibility that, uh, yeah, if he wasn't checked on, uh, 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 he could have died from uh, from uh, the exposure to the cold, yes. Because all the windows were knocked out of the house and all the heating elements that he had there right. were destroyed. It, right, it was, uh, yeah, and, and you know, the weather has been cold. Uh, yeah, it, it was a situation that could have been even worse because we could have been looking at a homicide as well. 
on some of them charges. Well, thank God you were able to find him quickly then. Well, I, you know, it, it's it's uh, the guys did a great job. I mean, investigations don't happen really swift like that. I mean, you got to develop your suspects, but they did a nice job. Their most important thing at that particular time was to make sure that he was going to be okay, and that, and that's what they did. Then the investigation continued. It fell into place pretty quickly. Uh, by them following up leads and we did make an arrest and we believe we got the people responsible for what happened.